Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and I actually want to show you a little 4-inch LCD display that I got for both my NVIDIA and AMD system. Now, very cheap, and I'll have parts linked in the description below, but this 4-inch LCD display is actually a touchscreen. However, this kit is made for a Raspberry Pi. You can see the case here. Um, and the case comes with an assortment of items, which we're going to go over right now. But we got our 4-inch LCD touchscreen. We got the actual case that's supposed to hold the Raspberry Pi, but because we're not utilizing it, um, you know, I had to figure out a way to mount the LCD to the case. Because if you look back here, if there was a Raspberry Pi, it would hold up the LCD, but because there isn't, I had to mount it. I actually used a little bit of glue, which I can break at any point in time if I really did want to use it for a Raspberry Pi, but it's a pretty cool kit, right? So it's got the case, comes with a screwdriver, standoffs, uh, nuts and, and screws that you need to connect everything. Um, it even has uh, mini HDMI to HDMI and then the normal HDMI to HDMI because honestly if you could figure out a way and wouldn't sacrifice the USB ports you could run this display off of your integrated GPU. It's just for me it blocks my IO. Uh, also, we get a little heat sink which is pretty cool. The heat sink will actually cool the Raspberry Pi and it comes with thermal pads, 3M tape, the works, and it actually connects right here. Right there, you see the little connector. Now there's a couple things here. This button is not an on-off button. It's actually like, you know, brightness, like a menu button. Then we have our micro HDMI, or excuse me, micro USB, HDMI, 3.5 uh, jack, and then the connection up top here that actually connects to your Raspberry Pi, but it's a decent little LCD screen. You can change the orientation. You can do landscape portrait the whole nine yards, but this kit is a little cheap uh, kit that you can get online off of Amazon. And then just turn it into a little monitoring device. Uh, it, because it is possible to use touchscreen, they do give you a stylus, which won't be utilized because of the conditions we're using it in. But instead of running this non 1080p monitor that I got from my NOAA job, um, and leaving it on all the time, which it does sleep after X amount of time. But you know, I like to disable this and just watch everything from here. Now, yeah, you can move your miner and everything over there, but this is where the miner would just go automatically. And then this is where I like to keep an eye on everything. And you can see we got GPU temperatures, GPU clocks, memory clocks, TDP, or how many watts each card is pulling. And it's very hard to see, but these white gauges over here are actually the fan speeds. And then of course, CPU core and stuff like that. Not everything on there is super necessary, but it gets the job done. Now, I just simply plugged in a small HDMI cable, which I'll also have linked in the description. Very short cable that just runs to the 3080. And then the power is micro USB to USB, which we got connected to the IO. Once you have everything plugged in, uh, it should automatically detect, but if it doesn't, just right click on your desktop, go to display settings, and you should see you know, two pop up. If it doesn't, go ahead and hit detect. Um, sometimes you might have to unplug the USB and plug it back in in order for it to be detected, but it should automatically detect. Then you select it and you wanna scroll down. Now here you'll be able to change the scale output. I wouldn't mess with anything, just leave it at 100% and the display resolution is 800 by 40. That is what this little guy is rated for. So it's a four inch HDMI. It says display C, but it's just display. Uh, there's the model number and everything as far as the touch controller and then the megapixels 800 by 480. Uh, I did have it automatically in portrait when I got it, which was weird. So I changed it to landscape and make sure you extend display so you don't duplicate this desktop onto this. Uh, once you have that all set up, you're gonna need ADA 64. Now, you could run the trial, but what's gonna happen is every diode on here is gonna say trial. So it's gonna be like GPU two diode trial. It's not gonna read you the actual temperatures, the actual clocks, none of that stuff. But you open up ADA 64, click on file on the top left, and then preferences. And in here, you're gonna to go to sensor panel, which is down here at the left, so sensor panel. And then you're gonna check show sensor panel and then hit okay. Now you're gonna get a base template, a base template, okay? Uh, it's not gonna have everything that I have on here right now. Matter of fact, I can actually export 
um, and you know share this profile with you guys if you're interested in that. I'll see what I can do, check out the description. But you're gonna get a basic layout and you could just start changing stuff. Now, say for example, you know, we wanna use this CPU bar. We could just right click it and then hit copy and then right click in an empty space and hit paste. And then we can right click again and modify. And we got all kinds of good sensors. So we got sensor item, which believe it or not, let me go ahead and get out of here real quick. So sensor item is these bars right here that you see. I just made it a little bit bigger than the stock. Uh, simple sensor is like these guys right here. So the GPU clock and the GPU memory. And then you have the gauge, which is where we're seeing the fan speeds. And then you have the graph. Now I really don't like the graph too much because it, it doesn't show exactly the numbers that I want to see. Like for example, if we choose graph right now, click CPU clock, hit OK, you're going to see this graph and it doesn't really show us too much information. Now the number is way too high. We obviously got to turn that down, but we can always tune that in the settings. So if we modify that right now, max value and then minimum minimum value, we know what the, the max clock is. So let's say, uh, I don't even think it's four gigahertz Let's say three, 3,500 gigahertz or 3.5. You can see we, you know, we got the megahertz bouncing up and down, but it doesn't give us very specific. Um, so you got gauges, you got sensor, you got simple sensors, all kinds of good stuff in here that you can utilize, um, as well as the graph. Uh, and all the sensors that are available obviously depend on your hardware on whether or not they're detected, but it pretty much detects everything. Memory clocks, CPU clocks, virtual memory, free memory, uh, GPU, each GPU's clock memory utilization, uh, bus type, all that stuff. All that stuff is right in here. I go straight down towards the bottom. There's our TDP, or excuse me, yeah, there's our TDP right there. And if we scroll a little bit back up, there's a whole section just for temperatures. All right, there's the diode. So GPU one diode, GPU two diode, so on and so forth. And then you just set it up however you want. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna right click and delete this guy right here. You can copy, you can paste, but what I would do is just take the general template that you have when you get ADA64 and then copy it to a bunch of places, maybe play around with the sizes and then adjust it to how you like it. But it makes it very simple because I can just drag this over to this little touch screen or LCD and then I can have this monitor um, out of the way. Uh, I don't disconnect it because obviously I want to still be able to manage my GPUs and everything with MSI Afterburner and my miners but I can just minimize ADA, use this only when I need it. But say for example, how I normally utilize it is, you know, I gotta dust the, the monitor too, but I basically, you know, I'm doing my thing around the house. I wanna make sure my miner's doing good. I just come over here real quick, take a look. All right, you know, temps are looking good. Thermos are looking good. Wattage, all right, everything is still good. No drivers failed, because if drivers failed, I can tell because the GP would start pulling the stock amount of power. You know, I could hear that the fans are running, going good, everything's fine, and then I just continue about my day. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier for that. So uh, Hashraptor did a very good job with his Stormtrooper build. I really like the LCD. I think he got a bigger one, the 7-inch, but this is the 4-inch. So again, if you're interested in this and just want to copy my template, then change it up to be your own. Check out the description. I'll not only have the parts, but uh, my template as well. I'll figure out how to export that maybe put it in mega.nz and let you guys have it. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys up in the next one. Take care.